This is a perfect new moon to start a project around or put a lot of research and mental effort into starting something that you're passionate about. So if you're excited to dive into what exactly we can expect from this Gemini new moon, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. If you're new here, hi, I'm Erin. I make videos on astrology and I also make music and you can check out a lot of things related to that down below. And I'm a Western astrologer and I use whole sign houses. So we're gonna start out looking at the overall vibe of this new moon and then we'll get into what it means for you based on your specific sign. So this Gemini new moon is happening on June 6th, 2024 at 5.36 a.m. Pacific time. So it's in the morning, no matter where you are, at least in the U.S. And this is happening with the sun and the moon at 16 degrees of Gemini. So Gemini is an air sign focused on communication and mental activity, and it is a mutable sign, meaning it is the transition between seasons. So there's an adaptable, changeable, flexible quality here of what we're starting being something that we're mentally passionate about, like a research or writing or some kind of like project. It's a very project-esque energy. This is not probably going to be the most emotional new beginning whatsoever. But also with Gemini, there's an ability to be malleable and flexible that helps out with not having everything ready and planned out at the beginning. This is happening in the second decan of Gemini or the middle third. And this is associated with the Nine of Swords tarot card. And it's actually called the Lord of Cruelty because it's generally about being restlessly in the middle of a decision and not pleasantly, like you're not glad about this decision that you have to make. There's a lot of options, there's a lot of tossing and turning, and this part of the sky is co-ruled by Mars, which adds to that like Mercury Mars quality of mental frustration or mentally being like going through a decision that's really challenging. So this is showing that you're probably making a decision here to pursue something specific, and it's not necessarily the easiest decision, but you're really happy about either option, and that's why it's so hard to have this decision. You are sinking into and like committing to one of those options and one of those sides. Now, the good thing about this new moon is that it is conjunct Venus in Gemini exactly by degree. Venus is the planet of love and harmony and uh, getting along with others and, you know, really enjoying things on an aphrodisiac or just like a social, like really kind level. So with the new moon conjunct Venus, this is amazing for showing that we are getting along well with people around us. We are having very good social harmony and a lot of ease and creativity and high morale in regards to this new beginning. It's also really nice that Mercury is conjunct Jupiter early on in Gemini. So Mercury is at home in Gemini and Jupiter is there too, which is positive communication. This shows that the way we're communicating and the overall dynamic intellectually is positive, grateful, and upbeat. You're probably getting or being able to communicate really good news around this matter. And Jupiter is also trying Pluto, showing that what you are expanding in positivity towards is helping you really nail down and focus in on what matters to you. This new moon is also loosely sextile Mars and Aries, which adds a lot of energy or the opportunity at least to like get up off your ass and actually do something valuable. And with Mars conjunct Chiron and Aries, Chiron is an asteroid of vulnerability or being triggered. So it seems like there's an opportunity here to do something a little bit scary and vulnerable that will help you feel stronger about what you're beginning. Now, the one downside here, or really one and a half kind of downsides, is that this new moon is square Saturn and Pisces fairly tightly. And a new moon squaring Saturn is gonna show blockages, restrictions, or something time-based getting in the way. It's not the end of the world, but it shows a definite blockage, setback, or delay happening, where you could feel like there's a barrier to you getting exactly what you want. And with Neptune also in Pisces, there could be an element of confusion because this new moon is loosely square Neptune of not getting all the information and the delays and blockages are coming from not getting all the information that you need in order to make this decision as soundly as you would like. But there could also be just literally cold barriers up. So overall, this is a great new moon. It shows the ability to start something passionately and mentally that you're really excited about and that you made the correct or at least a comfortable decision around but that square to Saturn does show delays, blockages, or something getting in the way. So if you have any thoughts or anything to say about this new moon, definitely let me know in a comment down below. And let's pull a tarot card to see what the overall energy is for this new moon in Gemini. The Emperor. So the Emperor is all about, honestly, Aries energy. Going for something, being the leader, being the person that decides. So make sure that you are the person in control and deciding here, because it looks like you were taking initiative and starting something mentally to like really lead. So now let's get into what this means for each of the rising signs based on, you know, your own chart. So for Aries Risings, this is in your third house of communication. So you're probably getting really busy on literally a project, not that serious, not that intense, but you're getting busy on content or writing. Then for Taurus Risings, this is in your second house of income. You're probably starting to make money or 
make something in your life change that will allow you to be busy making money. For Gemini Risings, this is in your first house of self. You have a new beginning related to you, who you are, and something about your identity or appearance that you're starting. For Cancer Risings, this is in your 12th house of mental health or internal habits, so you're probably changing something about your mental health, how you take care of yourself, or starting something new to combat addictions or another habit that you dislike. For Leo Risings, this is in your 11th house of networking and community, so you're probably starting something new related to a group of people, um, joining a community, or having a group of friends begin. For Virgo Risings, this is in your 10th house of career, you are starting something new around your job, career, or profession. For Libra Risings, this is in your ninth house of foreign travel or higher education. You are probably starting to study or travel somewhere new. For Scorpio Risings, this is in your eighth house of the occult or more likely finances and investments. So some of you are probably starting something new with witchcraft or the occult. The majority of you are starting something new as it pertains to finances, investing, and long-term financial health. For Sagittarius Risings, this is in your seventh house of committed relationships. You have a very exciting new beginning of something to do with a partner, either committing to them or starting something new with them. For Capricorn Risings, this is in our sixth house of physical health and wellness. We are starting something having to do with our physical health regimen and taking care of ourselves, or it could also be something new with people that we work with, with hiring a team or having new people surround us and work-wise. For Aquarius Risings, this is in your fifth house of creativity or dating. You're probably either starting something creatively new and exciting or starting to see someone romantically. Then for Pisces Risings, this is in your fourth house of home or family. So you are starting something new with your family, your house, or moving in somewhere new and different. If you enjoy this, do let me know down below in a comment. Let me know what you are expecting for you around this new moon. And also make sure to subscribe if you have not already. I hope that this new moon goes well for you. It's definitely not the most serious or intense. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Oh,